Here we want to solve the Euler equation. y is a function of x. The equation is x squared y double prime plus alpha x y prime plus beta y equals 0. Uh, we want to find appropriate ansatz. Um, here, because we take the second derivative multiplied by x squared, the first derivative multiplied by x, and the function, um, it seems, uh, if you're familiar with the power law, the power law drops down a, a uh, power of x by 1 with each derivative, and then we multiply by uh, a restoring power of x. Uh, so the appropriate onset here could be a power law, y of x equals x to the r, where we don't know what that uh, exponent is. When we substitute in, the, we'll get an x to the r minus 2. We multiply by x squared, we get back x to the r. So we've got r times r minus 1 from the second derivative times x squared times x to the r minus 2 gives us back uh, x to the r. Plus alpha, the first derivative drops down in r. And then the uh, multiply by x gives us back an x to the r, plus beta times x to the r equals 0. And the x to the r cancels, which is why this ansatz is appropriate. And we get a quadratic equation in r, which we can see is r squared. Then we have a minus r plus alpha r. So plus alpha minus 1 r plus beta equals 0. OK? And that's our characteristic equation for the Euler equation. OK, another way of seeing this is um, instead of a, um, a power law on SATs, we can see if we can change variables to make this into uh, exponential ansatz. So how do we change variables x uh, into another variable so that x to the r becomes exponential? Well, if we take x equals e to the psi, where psi is our new variable, then y of x becomes e to the um, r psi becomes exponential, right? So we can say we take x equals e to the psi. We take uh, y of x, little y of x, equal to capital Y of psi. Then our ansatz. is um, y of psi equals e to the psi to the r is e to the r psi. So that's our exponential ansatz. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that um, the solution of the Euler equation for capital Y is a solution of the constant coefficient equation, right? Because we have an exponential solution. So what should be the equation for capital Y? The equation for capital Y should have, have this characteristic equation, right? The same characteristic equation as the Euler equation. And which, which um, constant coefficient equation has this characteristic equation? Well, it's the one where we get a y, capital Y double prime, gives us an r squared, plus alpha minus 1 times capital Y prime, gives us alpha minus 1 times r, plus beta capital Y equals 0, where now the derivative is with respect to psi rather than with respect to x. Okay. All right, so how do we use this to solve the original Euler equation? Well, we know that there are three cases associated 
with this uh, quadratic equation, right? Two real roots, two complex conjugate roots, and two um, uh, degenerate roots. So now if we go back to the uh, Euler equation, and we use the fact that we have um, x equals e to the psi and y of psi, or I should say y of x equals capital Y of psi. And equivalently, if we solve this for psi, we, we also have psi equals log x. Okay, so here we'll just consider positive x to make the discussion uh, simpler. Okay, so we have the characteristic equation. Right, is our um, this one right? So r squared plus alpha minus one r plus beta equals zero. Okay, and then what are the solutions? So there's three possible cases. So one is uh, two real roots. So let's call those roots R1 and R2. Then we know that there's no problem here with real roots, x to the r. So we have uh, y of x equals c1 times x to the r1 plus c2 times x to the r2. Okay, two real roots. Then what happens? if there are uh, complex conjugate roots. So uh, complex conjugate roots. Well, we know the solution for um, capital Y, right? Because capital Y um, just has the um, constant coefficient equation. So we know that capital Y of psi so first, what are those roots? We need to write down those roots. So r is equal to lambda plus or minus i mu, right? So we know that capital Y psi is equal to e to the real part of r, lambda psi, times a times cosine mu psi plus b times sine mu psi, right? So that's the um, case of complex conjugate roots. And then we need to convert that back to x. So we can convert that back to x, y of x, by changing variables. So psi is log x. So e to the lambda log x is e to the log x to the lambda. So that's just x to the lambda in front, right, the power law. And then we get a psi equals log x. So we get this uh, rather strange form, cosine mu log x plus b sine mu log x. Right? So we get this singular behavior at x equals 0, because log 0 is infinite, right? Okay, and then the final case is what happens when we have uh, degenerate roots. So degenerate real roots. Well, then we know our solution for y of psi is going to be, um, so this one, the root is r. So we will have um, our exponential e to the r psi. And then we'll have a constant plus another constant times psi. Right, so we have this extra solution where we multiply 
by the independent variable. And now converting back to y of x, uh, again we have uh, our conversion, which is uh, psi equals log x, right? So here we have our psi is log x, so this is our x to the r in front, c1, and then psi now has a log x here, and the singularity comes in the log x. Okay, so those are the three cases. So the way to remember this, how to solve the Euler equation, is that you make the substitution y equals x to the r, you get the characteristic equation. And then you remember that you can convert the um, substitution y of x equals x to the r to the substitution um, capital Y of psi equals e to the r psi if we define variables as x equals e to the psi, psi equals log x. Okay then the equation for capital Y is the constant coefficient equation with ha which has this characteristic equation and then you can write down the roots for the case of two real roots very simple right it's uh, just the power law ansatz for the case of complex conjugate roots then you know how to write down the solution for the constant coefficient equation capital Y of psi and then you convert it to the solution for y of x using the change of variables. And the same with the degenerate real root case.